But given the fact that this market is up as much as it is from the lows, and we're here in the middle of, you know, earnings season, right. do you buy mm -hmm. into the rally that we've seen in equities? Well, I haven't bought in, and obviously I've been wrong since uh, March of 2009. Um, I still have a deep, deep concern about the leverage in the banking system, which I've expressed that view over the last decade. Uh, I look at the inability of governments who are spending vast amounts of money to generate much growth in GDP. In fact, there's been some excellent work done on how the uh, marginal value of a government dollar spent is now negative. I could give you the example of running a $1.5 trillion deficit last year and GDP goes up $200 billion. So we're not getting much bang for a buck, but we still owe the buck at the end of the year, as we will at the end of this year. So I very much worry about that. I also worry about what's going on in China. Uh, the Chinese government has asked the banks to cool down the lending. The latest data out in March showed that lending's gone from $300 billion in the month to $100 billion. Right. And I just look at $200 billion less a month. That's $2.4 trillion a year yeah. less, if it was to stay that way. And obviously, it has to have an effect on their economy, as the lending of uh, $2 trillion did positively last year. Yeah, these are big numbers. So do you think that the, the idea that you know China is rising so much and we've got all this demand, and that's really been riding right. this wave of sure. making money in the commodity yeah. space and some of the producers, do yeah. you think that's slowing down now? Well, when you look back at China in 2009, uh, they had a $4 trillion economy. They lent $2 trillion to people. They had a $600 billion stimulus. Well, $2 trillion lending and $600 billion of stimulus should generate some GDP growth. Mm. I'm not even convinced that 10% growth, which would be maybe $400 billion, is a, a very good response to all the measures that were taken. Uh, really interesting. All right, let me, let me ask you about the launch of the Sprott Physical Gold Trust. That's why you're here today, right. uh, going public on the NYSC in February. Can you tell us about it? T tell me sure. about this trust. It, the, sure. You called it the Sprott Physical Gold Trust. Yeah. Well, first of all, I should point out that notwithstanding the fact that we're in the financial capital of the world here, <laughs> Toronto is the uh, capital for mine financing in the world. And in fact, some people think for resource financing in the world. And we've been a big part of it. And uh, our view was that we could come up with a better vehicle than the Spider Gold Trust. And we think we have a much better vehicle than the Spider Gold Trust for a number of reasons. One, you can actually get physical gold with your units. You that's, can't with the Spider Gold point, Trust. That's a key point, key point. The tax rate on capital gains in our vehicle is 15%. In the Spider Gold Trust, it's 28% because the IRS considers it a collectible and therefore taxes it differently. You're kidding me. No. Oh, I did not so I realize that. This is important. There. And the third major difference is the counterparty to owners is the Royal Canadian Mint where we store the gold. And I would assure all your listeners that every bar is there. Um, is not a levered financial institution. It's a, it's a um, part of the government of Canada, and the risk of that institution not having the gold is remote. Yeah, but why would I want to put gold, money into gold today, given that that too sure. has had a tremendous run? Sure, sure. Well, it's been the investment of the decade. Yes, it absolutely. Has been the investment of the decade, hands down. Notwithstanding central banks selling it all decade long, which is not a, doesn't sound like a very brilliant. No, it's pretty. Backwards. Yeah, absolutely. But I would say that um, gold looks even better today than it's ever looked. Um, we have sovereign risk on the economic map today that we didn't have on the econo economic map before. And as I look at the problems in Greece and I see people taking four or eight billion out of the banks because they're worried now about the government, so they're taking the money out of the banks and maybe it'll move to the other uh, pig countries. Uh, where do those people put that currency? And I think we can obviously see that lots of people are putting it into gold, including some of the smartest investors in the world these days. And you've seen some of the smartest investors in the world put their money in mining-related activities, Absolutely. not necessarily just gold. No. So do you like other mining-related commodities? Tell me where else you see opportunity. Well, we love silver, obviously, as kind of an offshoot to gold. In fact, I think silver will act better than gold. There's not as much silver inventory in the world as there is gold inventory. I have not been that big a proponent of the cyclical base metals, copper, nickel, zinc, things like that. Copper has doubled. It's, it's probably tripled off yeah. the bottom or quadrupled From, off tripled, the bottom. Tripled on the bottom, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Um, but I haven't been there because I worry that the economy, that the financial crisis that we went through, that we are supposedly out of, that we're probably not out of it. We've moved things from the private 
company space to the public company space by, oh, yeah. you know, governments taking over Fannies and Freddies and AIGs and whatever, and the Europeans bailing out their banks, the British bailing out their banks. And now, of course, the focus goes back to the government. So we'll just see how long those governments, people will continue to buy their sovereign debt. And if they stop buying the sovereign debt, then the reason for owning gold will just become more and more apparent. So final question here. When you're looking at an overall portfolio, um, what should it look like? Majority in commodities? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're looking for a long-term, secular, right. negative story for right. equities here. But what's going to be the right. catalyst? Because we've, we're seeing this market climb, yeah. even though you've got fundamentals right. that are fragile right. in terms of the economy. Well, of course, we run hedge funds, so we're kind of, you can be short and long at the same time. As long as your shorts are doing better than the, uh, the sorry, the longs are doing better in shorts, you're okay. Yeah. And um, you were going to ask, you know, like how deeply involved should you be in precious metals? I'm only going to give you my own experience, okay? We are 40% long precious metals, and we're about another 35% long precious metal stocks. Okay. 20% uh, in oil and gas, and the rest miscellaneous. So we're essentially all in. We probably have the most levered position to those products that you could possibly imagine. And you don't see a catalyst. I mean, what's the catalyst to, to move stocks lower? I mean, I know you're looking for this market to crack, but... Well, I think if, they ha if a problem of slowing in China happened, and you know, the Chinese market peaked out in uh, August of last year. Yeah. Hasn't gone anywhere. Their market doesn't look like it's buying into the Chinese experience as much as we're buying yeah. into the Chinese experience. And